the challenge of the Yukon. I'm king from New Husky! King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in preserving the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. The Palace Cafe in Dauphin was always crowded. Men who weren't standing at the bar or sitting around tables talking were in the back rooms, concentrating on poker games. But in Max Watkins' office, there was another kind of concentration as Max and his three hirelings faced Joe Merrill. I don't mind losing money in an honest poker game, but there was five aces in that deck. You're wrong, Joe. How about it, Pete? Sure he's wrong. I tell you, boss, that game was straight. You see, Joe, Pete here says the game was straight. Oh, he does, eh? I guess he's getting a cut of that 35000 I lost before I got my eyes open. Maybe that's why he's so sure the game was straight. Wouldn't make so much noise about it if I were you. Well, you low down crooks, a whole pack of you are painted with the same yellow. I ain't the only one that's dropped money like that. I ain't the only one seeing you crooked. A lot of us have the same idea. Only this time I'm making it my business to see you run out of town. You can't prove a thing, and you know it. We're playing with Pete, Sam, and Bart here. Three men's word against one. <laughs> you won't have a chance. Oh, we'll see what kind of a chance he'll have. I'm going out now. No, no, you don't. You're not going anywhere. You... Hey, boss. I might have known you pull a gun, Watkins. We should have looked for it sooner then. Uh... Better make sure he won't live to talk, boss. He won't talk. He's past that now. Hurry, Pete. Put your gun in his hand. Put my don't gun. stand there, you fool. Do as I tell you. Yeah, sure. In his hand? Yeah. Any questions you're asked, I'll do the talking, see? Suddenly the room was full. Miners crowded the doorway, stopping in their tracks as they saw Joe Merrill on the floor, clutching a gun in his hands. I thought I heard a shot in here. What happened? It was Pete. He had to shoot in self-defense. Self-defense? What do you mean, Max? What happened? They were in a game of poker. Hey, wait a minute. Here comes Sergeant Preston. Sergeant! Hello there, Slim. Hey, what's yeah, all I'm the mighty ex- glad you got here, Sergeant. Hmm. Looks like I got here too late. Joe Merrill. How'd this happen, Max? I was just telling the boys, Sergeant. He says Pete did it in self-defense. That's right. They were in a poker game. Who? The Joe, Pete, Sam, and Bart here. Joe had been losing pretty heavily, and he was in a bad humor, I guess. Yes? They got into an argument. Joe pulled a gun. Is that true, Pete? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how it happened. He had a couple of drinks. Never thought anything like this would happen. Is it customary for them to play poker in your office, Max? Oh, no, they weren't playing in here. Who was in the room besides Pete when Joe pulled the gun? Sam and Bart and me. They'd all come in here. Yeah, we thought maybe Max could quiet Joe down. Pete started to tell me what had happened, and Joe accused him of lying. I see. Lying about what? Uh, he said he that... Said he said that uh, Pete owed him money. Well, Pete, it's a good thing you've got witnesses. Max told you just how it was, Sergeant. He can tell it to a minor's jury at your trial. At my trial? Hey, what is this? You'll be tried for murder. Early the next morning, Max Watkins was talking to Pete McCreary in his cell in the Dolphin Jail. The cafe owner spoke quietly, outlining his plan to Sergeant Preston's prisoner. But even as he spoke, the frown on Pete's face deepened. You're trying to frame me? Frame you? Use your head. What good would it do me to try that? I ain't taking no murder rap for anybody, understand? Not for anybody. You'll never take that rap. Sam and Bart and me will swear we saw Merrill draw first. Four of us are the only ones that know what went on. That's just it. Well, you got a perfect story. Well, what I don't get is why you shove the blame on me so fast. Listen. 
Was I in on that poker game? No. That's why I talk so fast. Huh? If the Monty knew Joe found out the game was crooked, he'd put that puzzle together in two minutes. He'd know we killed him to shut his mouth. How do you get that we killed him stuff? I don't care what the Monty knows or don't know. I don't like this. Yeah, you don't have a thing to worry about. I'll tell you something, Pete. I was uh, planning for us to clear out of here anyway. You mean leave the Yukon? Yeah, we cleaned up plenty here in Dalpin. But it's like Merrill said, they're beginning to get wise to us. As soon as this trial blows over, we'll strike out for Skagway and head for the States. Yeah. Well, I've just been thinking... Now, what's wrong? A lot of them miners on the jury. Yeah, what about them? I've cleaned them out in plenty of poker games. And they got long memories. Oh, forget it. You're just nervous. As long as the four of us stand together in our stories, well, I'm telling you, you don't have anything to worry about. Just be sure you don't let that money twist you up when you get in front of him. Yeah. Well, you remember this. That jury don't set me free. You're going to be the one to worry. Sergeant Preston was walking slowly along Dolphin's main street when he heard someone calling him. Sergeant! Sergeant Preston! Turning, he saw Whitey Burns hurrying toward him. Hello there, Whitey. Hey, where have you been keeping yourself? Well, I've been working pretty hard. Hey, I, I just heard about Joe. Yes, I got to the cafe shortly after it happened. I wish I'd have been there. I'd have knocked that no-good skunk out so cold he'd have... Oh, well, ain't much good talking now. It's too late. Who? Pete. Joe sure wasn't fussy about his company when he picked them three for his game. Well, I thought he always played with them. Well, he used to. That was before we all got wise. Oh, no, wait a minute, Whitey. I just got into Dolphin yesterday. It's been quite some time since I've talked to any of you boys. What's this all about? You ain't heard about the palace, then? What about it? I thought you fellas all gathered there and got together for poker and some drinks. Well, it's the only cafe in town, that's why. You know, Watkins didn't always own it. Yes, I know. He bought out Mac McDonald ten months ago. Yeah. And Mac went in for storekeeping. What's that got to do with the palace and Max Watkins? I was getting to that. Used to be a man could go there for a poker game and know he'd stand as much a chance of winning as he did of losing. Yeah, that was before Max and those three fellas working for him took over. So Sam and Bart worked for him, too, huh? Yeah. Took a while for us to see just how it worked out, but it all added up. Every time any of us got together for a game, one of those was always in on it. You can take it from me, not one of the four of them turns an honest card. I see. Now the money we lost. I don't blame Joe for drawing on Pete. The only thing that surprises me is that he was so slow pulling the trigger. Hmm. What'd you say? Oh, nothing, nothing. I'm just thinking. Yeah, they all ought to hang. You got Pete? Yes, he's in jail now. The trial's tomorrow. Trial? About a good a trial will do. Why do I have a hunch? Sometimes it pays to play them, and then sometimes it doesn't. But this whole thing is too perfect. What do you mean, Sergeant? Well, I have an idea. It might not work, but it's worth a try. Now, listen. How many people know where you were last night? Why, well, no one. That is, except Mac. I was talking to him this morning. Why? Good. Where were you? Out of the cabin. I don't see what... You, you... will. Would you be willing to take a chance to prove Joe might have been murdered? You don't... I think... don't know. I told you this is just a hunch. Oh, Sure. But I don't know how you can prove it. I'll tell you how. But first, I want to warn you that you may be risking your life. Listen, Sergeant. Joe is my friend. I'll do whatever you say. King and I'll stay as close to you as possible. But there'll still be danger. What's your plan? First, I want you to talk to Mac. Tell him what you're going to do, and he'll help you spread the story. Then I'll... Yeah, that's right. I heard maybe Pete don't stand the chance he thinks he does. Say, the Mountie's got something up his sleeve. Wait till it comes out at the trial. Well, we might see a hanging yet. Listen, boss, there might not be anything to Shut it. Shut up. Might not be anything to it. Well, you fool, of course there's something to it. Like everybody in town would be talking about it if there wasn't. Yeah, but I don't see how you uh, could have... That's the trouble with every one of you. Never see anything. All right. Suppose Whitey did see you shoot him. It's the three of us again him, ain't it? That ought to be good enough for any court. Well, it's like Pete said. He fleeced every miner on a jury. Whitey's been here a long time. <laughs> every one of them would like to see us hang, and all they need to do is hear his story. <laughs> <laughs> 
I never looked at it. Yeah, that you way. never looked beyond your own nose. Whitey was coming in the back way. Could have seen the whole thing. Yeah, I guess it's too late to do anything about it now. Too late to do anything about it. I'll hang for this if he talks, you hear me? Not you or Peter Bart, but me. He's not going to talk. I killed Merrill, and I'll kill him if I have to. Where's he staying? Over in the back room at McDonald's store, as far as I know. Why? We're going over there. That night, Whitey Burns sat playing a game of solitaire in the back of McDonald's store. Mac, as was his custom, was at the cafe. Through the window, Max Watkins and Sam could see Whitey hesitate, a card poised midair. He's by himself, all right. That's the way you wanted it, huh, boss? Yeah, just wanted to be sure we don't have any audience this time. Was that dog? I don't know. Just a stray, I guess. Shut up, you muck. Come on, Sam. Try this door here. If it's not open, we'll have to knock. It's open? Yeah, come on. You, Mac? No, it isn't, Mac. Whitey. Max Watkins. What are you doing here? <laughs> Just came for a quiet talk, that's all. Sit down, Sam. Yeah. What do you want to talk to me about? No use wasting time. I'll come right to the point. How much is it worth to you not to be at that trial tomorrow? Oh, now I begin to see. I told you I'm not here to waste time. How much do you want? I don't need your money, Max. I've got plenty of dust in my claim. So if you came here to buy me off, you can forget it. I mean business, Whitey. One way or the other, I'm making sure you won't be in Dolphin tomorrow. You can take your choice. You figure if I'm not there to say Joe was murdered, Pete will be set free, huh? That's right. I'm admitting right now I made a mistake. Shooting Joe without thinking of the window. But I won't make the same mistake twice. Meaning? Meaning if you won't be well, sensible and see things the way I'm suggesting, Sam here will go outside. Just to make sure no one sees you getting the same thing Joe got when he was ready to talk out of turn. You've been getting away with a lot ever since you set foot in Dolphin, Max. You've cheated every man that held a card in the cafe. That's how I make my money. Yeah? Well, your money's no good here, so you can get out. Now. All right, Sam. Go on outside and make sure everything's clear. I got a gun in this pocket. Why do you cover it? Don't worry, boss. I'll make sure this time. Then where you are, Sam. You aren't going anywhere. Preston! Put up your hands, Max. You're covered. Turn around, Max. You aren't hearing things. Preston's behind you, all right. Well, he looks like you don't believe it, Sergeant. How'd you know we were here? How'd you get in? I was here when you walked in, Max. I've been waiting for you, as a matter of fact. When King barked, I knew you were walking into our trap. Now, I gotta hand it to you, Sergeant. I never thought they'd believe it. Trap? Believe what? Believe Whitey's story that he saw you kill Joe Merrill. When you heard the rumor, your conscience took care of the rest. A double cross. Yes, you might call it that. If you'd thought about it, Max, you could have easily looked for tracks at the window. If Whitey had seen you, his footprints would still be in the snow. But your guilt confused you. <laughs> Well, you better open the door, Whitey. King wants to know if we need any more help, I guess. Boy, I never saw a dog like him. How'd he know they were coming in here? Why, he was barking before they even got to the door. Yes, King, the case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, the copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.